Hi there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Today I am going to be trying out a technique or kind of a, a couple of cards. I did a version of this called watercolor blobs and this is so easy for those people like me who just really like simple, clean, easy cards to create. I don't often kind of go all out. I sometimes do, but more often than not, I really prefer these cards which are kind of quick, easy, and a lot of fun. That's what I love about card making. I am going to be using some Tim Holtz watercolor paper today. This is smooth on one side and textured on the other, and this is my favorite go-to, the only watercolor paper that I use. It is a nice heavy uh, kind of watercolor cardstock, and this is perfect for me, for everything that I do. So it's the only one I buy. I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways that I go about this, but first of all, if you have some water reactive inks, I am choosing to use the Distress Oxide inks today. But if you have Distress inks, then they're going to work. The Simon Hurley inks are going to work. Catherine Paula inks are going to work. Anything that is water reactive, you can kind of end up watercoloring with them. Now this is what I do, and I'm sure this is not recommended from the <laughs> manufacturers, is to, I gently squeeze the lid of the Distress Oxide and it picks up some ink, and then I will um, just use it as like a little palette there. Now if you end up with too much water in you, inside your lid, then I do recommend that you definitely take that off. We do not want water to contaminate in with the ink pads at all. So uh, you'll see at the end here, I actually end up dabbing up that orange one. I do not want to ruin my ink pads, but I have been doing this for the last few years and I haven't managed to ruin anything or, you know, no mold has grown or anything weird like that. So that's just what I do. But if you're uncomfortable with that, then you should definitely just uh, smush them down onto a little acrylic block or some sort of uh, non-porous surface. And that way you can use it like watercolors. Now all I'm doing here is painting on some very basic circles and this one I've pretty much chosen to go all different colors. I have a little glass of water there up on the top right hand corner of the screen and I'm just using any paintbrush and I am just painting down some circles all over the place so I can cover up my whole little sheet here. And uh, for this one, I chose to use pretty much any colors. You can see the colors I got out and then I just kind of uh, used anything as I wanted it and anything that kind of felt fun, I used. I used some greens, oranges, blues, purples, pinks, and just made sure that my circles were a relatively good size. So this is the really, really simple part. There is nothing to this apart from drawing on some circles. If you had a circle stencil, I'm sure you could use that and you could even ink blend in some inks or you could die cut some circles from some scrap paper um, and ink bleed in those. Any way you want to do it, it's going to work just fine. So you saw there, I did dab up that orange Distress Oxide, uh, the water that was in the lid. I definitely don't want that getting in. And then here is the finished one here. And if you didn't have Distress Oxide inks, then I am going to use my little palette of watercolor inks. This is a Prima a watercolor paint set. And I just uh, give it a little spray down with some water. And then I actually did a few of these. <laughs> so that's why my water has turned so green. Um, but I am just going to kind of go through, just use what you have in your stash. If you have something like gelatos, then you can draw little circles and they are water reactive. So you can paint them into, uh, add some water and make them into kind of nice smooth circles. You could just use a watercolor, uh, sorry, not even watercolor, just normal coloring in pencils to create some circles. You could also use die cuts if you didn't want to paint or draw them in. You could just die cut some circles and stick them on. There are so many different ways to achieve this. Uh, if you wanted to get a whole lot of dimension and um, ombre looks or different colors, then you could use alcohol markers. That would be fun as well. So whatever you are into, you are able to do. Now I have finished this one off. I kind of stuck with uh, some yellows, greens, and blues for this one, and that's fine too. I didn't really have a color palette in mind. I was just really enjoying myself, and that's what I love to do when I am card making. So this is the Stick It double-sided adhesive. This one is the very, very thin sheets of double-sided adhesive. This is my favorite go-to uh, for thin adhesives. Then I have this set here, which is from Pink Fairy Studios. This is just a whole lot of kind of delicate foliage. Then I have a piece of black cardstock. I'm going to show you two different ways that you can achieve a very similar look uh, for these cards. As I said, for me, this was just about creating some watercolor blobs and adding on some, uh, finishing them off into cards. And I love the way that these came out. 
So I have just applied the sticker adhesive to the back there and this basically turns all of my die cuts into little stickers and means that I don't have to add adhesive on the back when I am sticking them down. But you could also do that if you just had them uh, already cut out or you cut them out of some plain cardstock and then you could uh, just use a makeup sponge and some liquid adhesive and sponge on some uh, adhesive onto the back of them. That's going to work perfect too. So whatever works for you and whatever you have in your stash. Now these kind of pop out, but honestly you can pretty much just leave them on the sheet because, uh, as I said, they come off like stickers. From this set here, I'm going to use the Best Wishes. This is a little Sizzix set. And I had a little corner here free <laughs> from my black piece of paper, so waste not, want not, and I will use that to cut out one of the sentiments. I'm going to show you a way that you can do this with stamping and with die cuts. So first of all is the die cuts, and obviously I have my best wishes sentiment. And then what I'm going to do is use some of these black uh, cardstock elements to, it's kind of like a silhouette perhaps, I guess. Um, and I'm going to pop each one of these on top of the circles that I have created. Now I do want want this to be kind of a little bit free and watercolory looking so I am going to make sure that some of my die cuts go outside of the circles I don't want them to stay just right inside the circle so you'll see that I actually place things so that they are poking out um, a little bit out of the outsides of the circles and I just have a play around with where I want to put them so with the sticker adhesive I'm easily able to just peel it back and that means that the adhesive is exposed and with stick it you can kind of place it down and it doesn't become permanent until you really press down on it. So some of these if I'm not sure about placement I'll just pop it down really lightly and that means that I can shift it around until I have the position that I would like to keep and then once I do I need to give it a good solid press and it will be stuck for good. So just have a play around for this one. I chose to use foliage, but of course you could use anything uh, that you have. You could use words, you could use shapes, you could use uh, any sorts of plants or foliage that you have. So just have a look through your stash and see what is available. I did decide to just leave this one at the moment. These panels are four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So I'm going to leave it that size for the minute um, and work on the other one just to show you an alternative. So for this one, I'm going to be stamping. This is the first one I did with the Distress Oxide inks. And I have this little uh, woodwear set here. This is the Bold Blooms stamp set. Again, just go through your stash and you will find something that will work. I really like these kind of big open flowers and the gorgeous leaves. I love the sentiment as well. So the big thank you, a huge thank you is going to go right in the middle of one of those circles. And I wanted the watercolor circles to look watercolor. So that's why they're not perfect and they're kind of a little bit misshapen. They're just handmade circles. I'm stamping everything in some VersaFine Onyx Black ink because it is a beautiful stamping ink. It stamps nice and dark and crisp and I know it's going to stamp well every time. This is some of Simon Hurley's Lunar Paste. This is the Slippery When Wet color and this is the best gold uh, ink for doing some splashes which I did onto my background. I just did some really light gold splashes because it was a um, just you know a little bit of background. You could definitely skip that if you wanted to. Then I'm going to use my paper trimmer to trim these down so that I can give them a little border when they're going to go down onto my card bases. Now when I'm dealing with the stamped one here, I'm happy to use my paper trimmer. But once I shift over to the die cut one, I'm actually going to use this little one here because that way I just don't want any of the die cuts to catch on my paper trimmer and then they kind of rip and tear. So this one here is very, very sharp. This is the eight and a half inch uh, Tim Holtz one. And this just cuts straight, nice, clean edges and I don't have to worry about it at all. So then I use some liquid glue. This is the Ranger Multimedium in the matte finish. Pop these down onto a very, very um, thin little border of a black matte there. Now I've shown you in the past ways that you can do this using ink as well and honestly you can just choose. I did. I knew it wouldn't work for the die cuts um, because I don't want to be inking over top of die cuts to create my little borders. So that's why I went with actually adding the extra layer of um, paper for this one. But either either is going to work fine for the stamped image. And then I'm popping this down onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. And I love that beautiful black border. It really pulls in the color from the stamping and the die cuts. And one is slightly bolder and the other is a little uh, less intense. But these are my two finished cards for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I will have all the products linked in the description box below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.